thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to just very briefly give you an update on our CLLM1 trial um, that evaluated lenalidomide maintenance treatment after first-line chemoimmunotherapy. I'm presenting this on behalf of my colleague Anna Fink, who can't be here today. So these are our disclosures. The German CL study group has received research funding by Celgene for this study, and I personally have no disclosures. So as you can see on this slide, we included patients into the trial that after first-line chemoimmunotherapy uh, were considered at an increased risk for early disease progression, which basically meant that they either had um, high MRD levels after first-line treatment or intermediate MRD levels plus high-risk genetics. Those patients were then randomized in a two-to-one fashion to receive either lenalidomide monotherapy or placebo. So we published um, the results of the primary endpoint analysis um, about two years ago, and we could see um, a PFS advantage for lenalidomide maintenance treatment. And now we present to you the um, update with a median follow-up of four years. <coughs> so this is an overview of the adverse events, and I won't go into too much detail here because it's all on the poster and we don't have too much time. Um, I just want to stress that there was an imbalance in um, fatal adverse events between the two groups. So we did see more fatal adverse events in the lenalidomide group. And what we also saw were three cases of um, acute lymphoblastic leukemias, ALLs, um, all occurring in the lenalidomide arm. And so following these cases, we talked to the DSMB of the study and finally decided to stop maintenance treatment with lenalidomide in all the remaining patients that were still on the drug at that time point. So if we look at the efficacy data with a longer follow-up now, we still see um, that there is a substantial and um, significant benefit in progression-free survival as well as a, a significant, uh, significantly longer time to next treatment in the lenalidomide group. While we do not see any differences in overall survival, mostly driven by the um, increase in fatal SAEs in the lenalidomide arm. Maybe the most interesting observation we made um, in this follow-up was that there was quite a proportion of patients, um, after all 13% in the lenalidomide group, who converted from either intermediate or high MRD levels to undetectable MRD below the threshold of 10 to the minus four, um, just under uh, lenalidomide monotherapy. So on the right side, you can see that most of the patients who required um, subsequent therapies received novel agents. So to conclude, um, after four years of median observation time, we still see a substantial improvement in PFS, EFS, and time to next treatment um, in the lenalidomide maintenance group, while we still see no overall survival benefit. We did see some patients in the lenalidomide group who achieved undetectable MRD during lenalidomide monotherapy, and we also saw three cases of acute lymphoblastic leukemia occurring in the lenalidomide group. And we have also prepared a more detailed workup of these cases. So if you have any questions or comments, you can come to our poster 2017 at the poster reception later. Thank you. <laughs>